Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss linear discriminant analysis with the help of a simple solved example. In the previous video, I have discussed what is linear discriminant analysis, why it is required, and what are the different steps to be followed to find the linear discriminants. Link for that video is given in the description below. So, in this case, uh, we have been given a data set with uh, two classes. Uh, the first class is represented with uh, W1, and second one is represented with W2. Each of this uh, data set contains uh, two features, x1 and x2. In the first class, that is uh, class W1, we have uh, five data points here. And uh, the class 2, that is W2, contains five data points in this case. Given this uh, particular data set, uh, we can represent the data set in two dimensional space, uh, something like this. Now, uh, what we need to do here is, uh, given this uh, data set, uh, which is in uh, two dimensional space, uh, we want to convert uh, the data into one dimensional space and uh, find a new axis so that we can project the data onto the new axis over here. Now the question comes in front of us is uh, how can we convert the data from two dimensional space into one dimensional space. I have already discussed each of those uh, steps. The link for that video is given in the description below. Now we will try to apply those particular steps and get the uh, new axis so that we can project this data onto the new axis over here. Now coming back to the first step, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the means of each classes here. So there are two classes are there. So first we need to calculate the mean of first class and mean of second class here. Uh, mean of first class is represented with the mu1 which is equal to 1 divided by n1 summation of x over all the examples in that uh, class here. In this case we have 5 examples. So the n1 value is equal to 5 here. That is what I have written in this case. And uh, we need to add the individual features and then we need to divide it by 5 here because 5 examples are there. So first we will add 4, 2, 2, 3 and 4. That is the first uh, uh, line you can see here. Uh, once I add all these things it will become uh, 15. 15 divided by uh, 5 is equal to 3 in this case. Similarly we need to add the second feature values that is uh, uh, 2, 4, 3, 6 and 4 divided by 5 which is equal to 3.8. Similarly, we have to calculate the mean for the second class, uh, which is equal to 8.4 for the first feature and 7.6 for the second feature in this case. Now, coming back to the second one, uh, what we need to do in the second step is uh, we need to calculate the covariance uh, matrix uh, for each class. So, first uh, covariance matrix S1 is equal to summation of uh, x minus mu1 multiplied by x minus mu1 transpose divided by n minus 1 uh, for all the examples present in that class here. So, here n is the total number of examples, n minus 1 is uh, sample uh, uh, coherence in this case. Now, uh, how to calculate this equation is, uh, first we need to put the value of x minus uh, mu1, mu1 is already calculated. So, the value of x is 4, 2, it is represented in the column matrix here, minus mean is already calculated, which is equal to 3, 3, 8. So, that is what I have subtracted every time, 3, 3, 8. So, this particular part is represented over here in this uh, particular part and x minus mu1 transpose. So, again x minus mu1 and then it is transpose. So, what we need to do here? Uh, first, we need to take the subtraction. Uh, here also we need to do the same thing and then we need to take the transpose and then we need to multiply these two things. The same thing will be done for the remaining data point. The next data point is uh, two, uh, 4 here and uh, the mean is same. 2, 4 mean is same. Again, we need to take the transpose here. So, uh, the same thing is done for the second, uh, third, fourth and fifth data point divided by n minus 1 where n is the uh, number of data points. Here we have 5 data points. In this case, 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 here. I hope uh, you know how to do the matrix uh, multiplication. I will show one uh, matrix multiplication here. Remaining things you can do it uh, by yourself. Uh, this particular uh, subtraction is uh, 4 minus uh, 3 is equal to 1 in this case. And then... Uh, 2 minus 3.8 which is equal to minus 1.8 over here. Now again the same thing is present here but we need to take the transpose in this case so it will become 1 here minus 1.8 in this particular case. Now once you get this particular uh, uh, calculation what we need to do we need to take the multiplication here that is nothing but this row is multiplied by this column it will become 1 here and this row is multiplied by the second column it will become minus 1.8 here. The second row is multiplied by the first column that is minus 1.8. The second row is multiplied by the 
second column here it will become minus minus plus and uh, uh, one uh, one point eight into uh, what is that called as uh, one point eight in this case one point eight into one point eight is equal to three point two four here so it will be three point two four so the first part this particular calculation is equal to how much three point four similarly we have to do it for the remaining data points once we have done it we need to add all those particular matrices and then we need to divide it by five minus one that is equal to four. Once you do that thing, you will be getting the final S1, which is equal to this matrix here. The same thing is repeated for the second class so that we can calculate the covariance matrix for the class 2. S2 is equal to same thing here. Only thing is we need to replace the data points and the mean in this case will be mu2 over here. Once you do the calculation, you will be getting uh, this particular matrix, which is nothing but the covariance matrix for the second class here. Once you calculate the covariance matrix for each classes, uh, we need to take uh, the sum of those uh, covariance matrix so that we will get a within class scatter matrix uh, that is SW here. SW is equal to S1 plus S2, which is equal to this matrix in this case. Now, once you calculate this uh, within class uh, scatter matrix, the next step is to calculate uh, the between class uh, scatter matrix with the help of uh, this equation mu1 minus uh, mu2 multiplied by mu1 minus mu2 transpose. We know mu1, we know mu2, put all those particular values in this equation, you will be getting the between class scatter matrix in this case. Now, once you calculate a within class scatter matrix and a between class scatter matrix, the next step is to calculate the eigenvalues. I have already told uh, what is the equation to be used in the previous video. Uh, we use that equation here, that is uh, SW inverse multiplied by uh, SB, that is nothing but uh, within class scatter matrix inverse multiplied by between class scatter matrix multiplied by w which is equal to lambda w here uh, once you simplify it you will get uh, the cardinality of sw inverse sb minus lambda i is equal to zero uh, we need to put all the values we know uh, sw we need to calculate the inverse uh, you can easily calculate this inverse of a matrix using scientific calculator or if you know the procedure you can follow it so that you can be able to calculate the inverse of a matrix here uh, SB is known to us, we will put that matrix as it is, lambda and this uh, I is the identity matrix over here. Now we need to solve this uh, uh, matrix, first we need to multiply these two matrices here and then we need to subtract this uh, lambda 0, 0, lambda in this case. Once you do that thing, you will be getting uh, the um, uh, this particular matrix here, uh, this, this is the cardinality here, so cardinality we need to calculate. Cardinality is nothing but determinant in this case. Uh, the determinant is uh, we will multiply this particular diagonal matrix minus this particular diagonal matrix, which is equal to 0 here. Now, once you calculate or uh, once you solve this equation, you will get the values for lambda here. Uh, in this case, we got the two values. Lambda 1 is equal to 0 here and lambda 2 is equal to 12.2007 in this case. Now, once you get the eigenvalues, the next step is to calculate the eigenvector. Uh, to calculate the eigenvector, we need to use this equation. Uh, in this equation, uh, we know SW, we know SB, we know lambda, we know I also. What is not known to us, W1 and W2 is not known to us. Uh, we will put this uh, lambda value in this equation. Uh, we will get, uh, uh, if you have two lambda values, we will get two simultaneous equations. You will be able to calculate W1 and W2 in this case. So, the same thing we need to do it for. Uh, uh, if you have more than uh, two lambda values or two eigenvalues here, you will be getting W1, W2, W3 and so on. Now, uh, in this case, I got W1 is equal to minus 0 0.5755 and uh, 0 0.8178. W2 is equal to 0 0.9088, 0 0.4173 in this case. And if you compare this uh, W1 and W2, uh, we don't compare this actually W1, W2. We will compare the value of lambda used to calculate uh, these uh, two things. Uh, for calculating W1, we have used the lambda is equal to uh, 0. To calculate W2, we have used the lambda is equal to 12.2007 here. Uh, because uh, the lambda 2 is more compared to lambda 1, W2 will be considered as the best eigenvector in this case. If you are interested in more than uh, one linear discriminant, we will go with the second best and third best and so on here. So, in this case, I am interested in only one linear discriminant. So, I will consider W2 as the eigenvector. Uh, I will represent it with W star in this case. 
to calculate uh, this eigen vector or can say that uh, w2 actually uh, there is another method is available uh, there is no need to calculate the eigen values and so on there is a direct method is available uh, you can use this equation here w star is equal to sw inverse uh, we know sw we will calculate the inverse of that one and then we will multiply it with uh, mu1 minus mu2 here so this is uh, sw known to us we will calculate the inverse uh, we know mu1 and mu2 we will put those values here and you will be getting this uh, uh, w star directly in this case so there is no need to calculate the eigen values and then uh, calculate the eigen vectors uh, we can replace those uh, steps with this uh, particular equation here so anyone you can use based on your uh, uh, the interest but actually the second part is quite easy uh, because here there is no need to calculate the eigen values and so on it is a straightforward method in this case now once you get this uh, w star uh, the next step is to calculate the linear discriminants uh, for each uh, uh, the input data uh, we need to multiply the input data to this uh, eigenvector so that you will be able to get the linear discriminant here that is nothing but uh, we have 4 2 here uh, which will be multiplied to this uh, 0 0.9088 second one is 0 0.4173 actually it is a dot product it is not uh, the cross product here uh, we will perform the dot product so that we will be able to get one scalar value here so once you multiply it something like this one you have to multiply 4 2 this is uh, 1 multiplied by 2 that is 1 by 2 uh, with uh, you can say that the point 0.9 uh, i will not be writing completely here it will be point 0.4 here you need to write completely whatever we have in this case and then once you multiply it it will be 2 comma 1 uh, it will become 1 comma 1 in this case that is uh, the value i got here uh, 4.46 similarly we have to do it for all other data points in this case so you can notice here uh, we have converted the two dimensions into what is that known as one dimension here now once you get this uh, the linear discriminant uh, we need to plot it uh, properly here uh, this is the original data uh, where we have the two dimensional plot it is converted into one dimensional plot something like this all these data are uh, plotted on the one new axis here this is a new axis uh, this new axis uh, is represented with you can see here y in this case and uh, the values are something like this uh, 4.46 uh, 3.48 and so on uh, those are represented with these particular values here and uh, the second part you can see here 12.35 8.8 and so on so you can see here 8.8 .8 and all those values are represented in this case so these particular set of uh, values are uh, or can say that the data points belongs to the first class these are uh, the data points belongs to second class and if you notice here there is a clear separation between these two classes here so you can say that this is the one class and this is the second class and we were able to separate it with the help of straight line in this case that is the advantage of using linear discriminant analysis here in this case we have converted the higher dimensions data into lower dimension space that's the first thing as well as we were able to separate this particular data with the help of a straight line in this case so in this uh, video i have discussed uh, how can we apply the linear discriminant analysis uh, uh, with the help of a numerical example to find the linear discriminants as well as uh, how can we plot those particular linear discriminants on the lower dimensional plot here i hope the concept of linear discriminant is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching